Hi everyone, I am Slide from Navi, and in this special episode, I will try to answer as many of your questions that you left in the comments on the previous episodes. I will also tell you how to play on mines using my personal setup. I remind you that I suggest taking a T-32 instead of a 5100. It does really well on mines. The map has complex terrain, and this means that the elevation angles and a strong turret will help us very much. You can use them to the fullest when fighting in the center of the map. Just use your turret and try to deal some damage. This works for both bases. The T-32 is also a great tank for side scraping. Use this whenever you can. Another good T-32 position is located near the rock in J-7. If someone tries to get into the lowland in E-4, you will be able to see and shoot him thanks to its great optics. You can also surprise the enemy on the hill from here. They won't expect it, and so you can deal some easy damage. Can you win with a setup of 350-100s and 213-90s? In theory, this is possible, though it will be hard on maps like Mainz, Himmelsdorf, and Ensk, though this is almost a perfect setup for Ruinberg. However, on almost all maps, except for Cliff, Steps, and possibly Prokhorovka, it is really worth having an IS-3 in the team. On Mainz, can the 1390 go through the town from the top base to distract opponents? This is not the best idea, since this move can be spotted in advance by the T1 in the village. You can try this in the case that the enemy has no tier 1s, and if you know where the enemy is, like hugging the hill. This way you can safely escape in case things get rough. Even if just one tank is left in the base, somewhere around J7, then you shouldn't go through the village at all. In the case that the enemy setup is heavier than yours, it's better to occupy the hill. You can effectively scout and deal damage from there if the enemy stays close to the climb. I encountered an unusual setup on mines. Two T-32s, two IS-3s, two T-1s, and a 1390. How do I counter them? The only difference of this setup and mine is a T-32 instead of an AMX 5100. This lineup will be vulnerable against autoloaders on closed and open maps like Steps, Himmelsdorf, Ensk, and Ruinberg. It can be easily destroyed by taking effective attack positions, because it's pretty slow. Use the advantages of your setup. If the enemy has strong turrets and you have autoloaders, don't rush head on. Try to get as close as possible to deal lots of damage, fast. In general, when playing against a T-32, try to avoid firefights where your only target is the T-32's strong turret. Is the 1390 much more efficient than the WZ-132? How do you use the Chinese tank correctly? Thanks to the drum, the 1390 is more efficient. Using its advantages is much easier. As you can see by the WZ-132 parameters, its main advantages are speed, mobility, and a high DPM gun. By the way, you better use the 85mm gun. It is more accurate and has a higher DPM. Plus the WZ-132 has great stabilization overall, so you need to use these traits. There is no drum, so we can't trade one enemy shot for a couple of hours. We'll have to observe the situation and deal damage when the enemy is distracted. The WZ-132 can't take a fully loaded 1390 one-on-one, -on -one, since the Chinese tank with 1050 HP is destroyable within one drum. You told us how to handle the defensive under the hill, but is it often done at the base? It can't be countered without hoisting up the hill at all. Yes, this is one of the defenses that can't be defeated without hoisting up. And even with hoisting up, you need to be extra careful. The enemy can be prepared for your actions. If you don't know how to hoist up, Levsha's masterclass will help you. The link is in the description. It has English subtitles. That's all the time we have for this episode. We will review the map of Prokhorovka in the next episode. Subscribe to our channel to stay tuned to the Science of Victory series. See you then.